Jim Gordon here in the offices of the Richmond Sentinel. Time for another edition of Richmond Stories. She is a best-selling author, registered dietitian. She is certified in meditation, NLP master practitioner, hypnotherapist, and she's a podcaster. And of course, as we come up and look at all of us, she is also a member of the Richmond Sentinel team as a columnist and uh, a video uh, guest always. Uh, Rika Mensing is back. Good to see you. Uh, good to be here, Jim. Thank you so much You're, for having me. You are quite welcome. Uh, well uh, into the year now, spring just around the corner. And the last time you were on, we were talking about you can make the change. What is yes. about something that really interests me as well? This topic about hydration. People yes. do not hydrate enough. You need to hydrate to feel great. Right. Uh, let's start right now about how important it is and how much water. I, I look at eight glasses a day. Right. Am, I, am I close with that? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, yeah. And I tend to mix it up maybe a little bit with some organic uh, uh, drinks, yes. nothing that's too sugary, but yeah. you take it from there. I just want to get my thoughts in, but how much does someone have to drink for day? Okay, so first of all, let's go into why it's so important as okay. well, right? For overall cognitive functioning, we need uh, to be hydrated well. Yeah. Uh, and what's so interesting is that studies have found that even mild dehydration can impair cognitive performance, create uh, difficulties with learning, with memory, uh, increase confusion. Uh, a person would be more prone to headaches and fatigue. Interesting. And yeah. also dehydration worsens anxiety. So we don't realize it. We get a headache, take a painkiller, instead of thinking, how many glasses of water did I have the day before? Yeah. Right? So it's good to be mindful about that. You were right, Jim. So six to eight glasses of fluid in a day is okay. And that is the 250 mole glasses. Right, so right. like about yeah, about a so cup not size. Like your cup so one point five no. to two liters of water is good in a day. Uh, water is the best way, calorie-free and guilt-free way to hydrate to <laughs> right. feel great. Yeah. Um, but if you feel your water needs a boost, you can add some mint leaves. You can add blueberries, cucumbers. My favorite is lemon slices, right? Okay. No, <laughs> because. Yeah. Um, your lemons actually have antioxidants and bioflavonoids, which reduce inflammation, they flush out toxins, they're good for digestion, and they also help prevent fatigue. So it's nice to have a water bottle and you can add some, you know, your own flavors to it and drink water intermittently throughout the day. Interesting. Now, I don't know if this is a really smart question, but I've always been curious. Is it possible to overhydrate? Yes, Jim. So overhydration, even though it's not common, it can occur if a person is having more than two liters of fluid over a shorter period of time and if they are not exercising. Right. Right. So what that does is the excess fluid can exert a greater workload on your kidneys and that can dilute important electrolytes like your sodium, your potassium, and your magnesium. And we need these electrolytes to stay in balance right. to help our nerves and muscles function better and to also prevent dehydration. So best is to listen to your body and drink water in, intermittently throughout the day, not like two liters all at once and I'm just going to sit still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm seeing more and more people walking yeah. around with those. They're almost like tank size yes, uh, yes. water bottles they're carrying around the room. Yeah. Um, I'm about eight days, as we're taping this, eight right. days into no coffee. Right. Uh, I haven't oh. had one in eight days. Uh, I'm a one a day or so, it's not really a huge deal. Right. I just got tired of paying for almond and soy and coconut milk <laughs> with my damn coffee. Yeah. Anyway, that's for another discussion. Um, how many cups of coffee can should one really? I, I felt right. safe with one, but I know I have right. friends that do four or five a day, which is not good, right? You, right. you expand on that. Talk about it when, uh, give us a caffeine rundown. Right, so um, about three to four cups of coffee, which equates to around up to 400 milligrams of caffeine, okay. is regarded as okay or healthy for most individuals, right? But Jim, we need to be mindful to calm down on the caffeine right. because caffeine is actually going to basically make your brain less sensitive to its natural stimulants like adrenaline and dopamine. Right. And what will happen is you will crave more caffeine to keep on making your brain, you know, release those stimulants. Eventually you will feel depleted and exhausted, right? right? The thing about coffee is it contains three stimulants, caffeine, theobromine, and theophylline, right? And what that does, it interrupts your sleep. So if you are drinking coffee, you want to go maximum four in a day, but no coffee after 2 p.m. Yeah. 
yeah. or switch to decaf, right? Tea is a great option. It also contributes to our fluid requirement, and it does contain black tea and green tea contains polyphenols, which support the good bacteria in our gut. Speaking of tea, you in your book, you highlight green tea and, and matcha tea as a uh, brain's cup of tea. <laughs> what makes matcha tea stand out uh, oh, and why yes. is it considered special for brain health? Okay, first of all, I love matcha tea and especially organic ceremonial matcha tea. It's a very dark green tea and the darker the tea or the greener the tea, the more potent it mm -hmm. is. And here's why, Jim. Matcha tea contains something called EGCG, which is epigallocatechin 3 gallate, right? What that does. I'll say ECG. Yes. Yeah, too much. Okay. <laughs> so, what that does, it boosts neurogenesis, so increases your brain cells. Right. It repairs damaged brain cells and it reduces inflammation, right? Another thing that uh, matcha tea has, it's an amino acid called L theanine. Okay. L theanine keeps a person calm and focused and relaxed. And the caffeine in matcha tea, which is very little compared to black tea and coffee, right. is released over a slower period of time and gradually, so you feel calm and relaxed. It's not like the caffeine from coffee where I'm hyper and then I crash and yeah, then I want right. more coffee. So it's much better for the brain. It's much better for mood. It's um, there's de definitely less anxiety associated with matcha tea compared to uh, coffee. What are your thoughts on uh, energy drinks? Um, I also find it odd that people think they may be being healthy by having that breakfast smoothie, which oh, yeah. could have like a thousand calories <laughs> or something. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? So energy drinks, we have to be very mindful here. Again, about the caffeine, um, you know, lots of stimulants in there, which is making our brain less sensitive to stimulants, right. which we just yeah, covered. Yeah. Uh, also, they tend to have a lot of sugar or artificial sweeteners. And artificial sweeteners can disrupt the good bacteria in our gut actually make us crave sweeter foods and cause us to gain weight. So, and I think we would have covered that previously, just yeah, touched on yeah. it in the previous segment. When it comes to fruit juices, even if it says 100% fruit juice, it's usually saturated with sugar, right? Best to go with the fruit instead of a fruit juice. Mm -hmm. And the no sugar added written on any fruit juice means there's so much sugar in the product as it is, they didn't have to add in any oh, more sugar, right? Okay. And with breakfast smoothies, you're right, like some can have lots of calories. so. It's an excellent way to hydrate, but just one portion of fruit, more of the veggies and the protein powder, and then it's then it's fine. I don't know if you can answer this, but you're talking about like fruit juice. I don't tend to drink a lot of orange juice, and a lot of people do in the morning. Yeah. But but I think one of the things is not to drink concentrate. Right. But even if it says not concentrate, is that still not terribly it, healthy? It would. I'd say dilute your fruit juice as much as you can, right? Add water. Yes, yeah. it still will have a lot of sugar. Sure. You know, right? And always, if you had to choose between fruit juice and a fruit, rather do the fruit. Right, and then drink a glass of water with lemon in it. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Uh, it, this is a trend that I know nothing about, or nor have I heard anything about it. Um, there is a trend of adding salt to water. Right. Is this advisable, and are there benefits or drawbacks? Uh, it's actually a very recent common okay. practice, and I've got some journal articles about it through Dietitians of Canada. Right. right. Um, so a lot of people are adding salt to their water uh, to keep their electrolytes in balance. You know, we said if we dilute our electrolytes, our nerves and muscles don't function well, right, right. right? If you're exercising, that's okay. But if you're not exercising, it's not a good idea to just add salt to every cup of water that you're having. Um, I think you have to be very cautious about that because excess salt can aggravate or influence or affect your blood pressure, hypertension. Oh, okay. So we don't want to have more than about 2,300 milligrams of sodium salt in a day. That's about a teaspoonful. We right. don't want to do more than that in a day. Okay. Yes. Um, of course, New Year's, we were talking about that in an early segment. People give up alcohol, go yeah. dry in January. And then, of course, we had recently this new trend. Again, I didn't know a lot about like dry February. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, we're into the spring now. Maybe people are saying, I'm going to be wearing uh, you know, less clothing, less yeah. bundled up as we get into warmer weather. Right. Uh, can you talk about uh, some, old, uh, give us some uh, reasons, some tips, uh, alternatives to people oh, can, to right. support people with their goals in that? Yeah, so when it comes to dry Feb, um, even not dry Feb, I think. Uh, dry anytime. You yeah, want to give right, up the bugs. Right. Some people do dry months. Jan. Um, yeah. I think, well, the focus has been on health and uh, latest research is supporting the idea that alcohol is carcinogenic, right? Yeah. And it's known that six 
drinks per week can increase your risk of breast cancer by 40%. Oh, goodness. Wow. And 10 drinks per week can increase your risk of breast cancer by 70%. So that is, you know, the trend is that people are associating alcohol with, you know, cancer. Yeah. And so alternatives for that, there's so many. The non-alcoholic wines or beers. The mocktails. Now, when you go to a restaurant, the yeah, mocktail variety. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a big variety of mocktails. Another good option is you could do your tea, your coffee, your hot chocolate, right? You could have your lemon water. Uh, you could also try something called kombucha tea, right, which is a popular. fermented uh, beverage which has probiotic supports a good bacteria in our gut. Right. But I think when it comes to weaning off or cutting back on alcohol, and this is where the NLP comes in, it's so important to have creative visualization. A person has to actually visualize themselves going to a restaurant, ordering the mocktail, having the social interaction, right? Enjoying their night, sleeping well, waking up with energy, exercising, um, better mood, less depression, less mm -hmm. anxiety, saving money. And the key thing is to focus on what you want and not focus on what you don't want. Right. Often people say, I don't want to drink, no alcohol, no, 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 no. The subconscious mind does not register the words don't or I can't, right? Um, and I like to think about Albert Einstein's quote. He says, imagination is everything. It is a preview to life's coming attractions, oh, right? Line. And so when you imagine yourself, oh, here I am, feeling very good, happy, healthy, lots of good energy, mm -hmm. better mood, your subconscious mind will work in a way to make that vision of yourself a reality. But you have to put, it, you have to imagine it first. And you also, do you not have to spend some time experiencing it and getting used to it? I, I yes. think of myself years and years ago quitting smoking where it didn't happen like that. I had to put myself in situations out with friends, right. you know, a beer here, something where you're used to having that with this, yes. but it took a while until it became less right. and less. Yes, and I think a change starts with making a decision, right? A change can happen in an instant. It's mm -hmm. rapid. Yeah. All it is is a decision, right? And you have to be 100% committed. Right. When you're 100% committed, you silence the inner dialogue in your, ha in your head, right? If you're 90% committed, then you'll be like, oh, maybe I should it's eat this. <laughs> maybe I should eat that. It's like you you have this cognitive dissonance where one part of you wants to do this, yeah. but the other part of you wants to do the opposite, right? But making a 100% decision silences that voice because it's a non-negotiable. Right. I don't do that. That's not me. Excellent. Right? Yeah, and uh, definitely create that vision and then work to, you have to have that vision. That's very important. As we like to do with all your segments, uh, where can people find out more information on you and uh, what you could do? You're a highly in demand individual, <laughs> especially when it comes to uh, registered dietitian work. Yeah, so I do offer virtual consults as well. My website, www.rikadiet4wellness.com. And you can email me on info at rikadiet4wellness.com to book a virtual consult. <laughs> yeah, so don't forget, you can check out all the print versions of our discussions here on these video segments, uh, Richmond Stories. Thank you for watching. Any comments, please let us know. I'm Jim Gordon. See you next time.